Hello and welcome to the Side One YouTube channel. My name is Ray and in this video, part 15 of Spot Micro, we're going to add a capacitor like this one. So that's a um, 10,000 microfarad capacitor, 25 volt, uh, onto the 5 volt supply bus for the Raspberry Pi. Now the reason for doing that is I've had a number of issues where under heavy load from multiple servos running, the 5 volt bus for the Raspberry Pi is sagging and that results in the Raspberry Pi rebooting. It doesn't do it all the time, but it does do it enough times to be a really annoying uh, feature of this robot. So the idea is this provides a power reserve when the main supply line which at the moment is a switch mode power supply a bench supply at that fed by this fairly long wire get the fairly heavy current drawer on it from the servos now these servos can draw up to three amps each and there are 12 of them on the robot so that's a significant current drawer on the power supply when i was looking at where to put this capacitor there's not a great deal of options so the plan at this stage is to mount it in a vacant spot in the tail so I've already powered down this robot uh, let's take the top off and you'll see what I mean about the lack of space inside now this robot has done a couple of uh, face plants and as a result oops, I've under the camera mast this front piece is actually broken i haven't reprinted it yet uh, the plan to reprint it is coming but i may yet be removing the ultrasonics out of this if i don't have the ultrasonics in there then i don't need the raspberry pi that's in there i was also planning on using the raspberry sorry i don't need the arduino that i've got in there if I don't have the ultrasonics. I was planning on using the Arduino to measure voltages, but I can do that with a different chip, the ADS1115, and I have a few of them available, so I'll probably use that instead. And as you can see, there's not a great deal of room inside here. And I can also, if I remove the Arduino, I can also remove this uh, TTL level shifter. And that'll save room inside the robot. I have got a camera in the front. That's what this cable's for. Okay, so that's the back end off. And you can see in here, there's a, a bit of room just down here where I could fit a capacitor. I have actually had a capacitor in there. So what I decided to do, because I also want to be able to remove this cover from time to time, I got one of these plugs and made up a lead and soldered that onto the back here and then trimmed the wires down to the suit. Now these are XH 2.54 connectors. This came with both pins and sockets, so to speak. I found that those pins are useless in this kit because there is nothing you can put them into. I've taken a two pin base, which is designed to mount into a circuit board and soldered that on the bottom there, and then used these onto my standard wires and one of these plugs. So all I have to do now is mount that inside and I can do that with hot glue. Now I know some people are going to be curious about this top. This is not one of the best prints so I really do need to reprint it. It is printed the same PLA as the rest of the robot is and I've been experimenting with a bit of paint. Didn't come up too badly. These are other rails that I can mount on top. 
eventually I want to bring through a connector onto the top to provide both battery voltage and also 3.3 volt and the I2C bus. I wouldn't mind bringing through some servo connections as well, uh, although I don't know how many I'll have spare when I get round to it. So while that's warming up, let's start pulling the back off. So this is what the temperature. That was the easy part. Now when I was soldering all this up and connecting it all up, I did make sure that the black wire is connected to the negative side of the capacitor and the red wire will connect to the positive side. If you're going to do this, make sure you check that polarity. It is important and it's very easy to blow it up if you don't. The two switch mode power supplies in here, one's tuned to 6 volts, one's tuned to 5 volts, 5.1, 5.2 volts thereabouts. The top one is the one that is set to the 5 point something volts, and that's the one that feeds the Raspberry Pi. So they're the ones that we need to connect, well that's the one we need to connect these wires to. And that will be in parallel with this surge capacitor which obviously isn't big enough so for that i'm going to need my soldering iron and the big thing to remember having put this in is whatever you do, don't short the 5 volt bus you short the 5 volt bus you will get a fairly significant discharge from this capacitor that we will be connecting in okay let's start putting it all back again actually before i do while i've put it down this far i noticed the other day when i was playing with it that the inside instrument plate is not actually in the slot here which has been annoying me a little bit, but I haven't been able to do anything about it without fully disassembling it. So while I've got it down this far, I might as well do that. I will put a link in the description to the GitHub for this project. And it has a list of all of the parts that I used as well as the program that I've been writing for it to run my robot lab on. There we go. Okay, now I didn't undo any of the servo horns, so I won't need to do any recalibration after this. We'll need to plug all of the servos back in though. So that appears to be set quite well in there. And this is a polarized plug. And he goes on one way. He's going to be very tight indeed. Really not a lot of room in the top of this.
Okay, so the fact that I have a blue light in the back is a good sign. That means the 5 volt bus is up and running because that's where it gets its power from. Let me just change to the other screen and we'll get it up and running. Okay, so the Raspberry Pi is up and running, which is a good sign. See the MRL 1.1.808. There, are, there is a newer version out of this, a much newer version. Uh, if I do a quick look up, we're up to 1.1.812. So there's a few versions being out. Now press enter to change in the directory. Execute a program in the local directory. Dot, dot sh. That starts it running. And my robot lab is now up and running. As you can see, the uh, legs just came to life. Now I have got a red light over here, which shows the uh, that's the power light on the Raspberry Pi. Now when it goes out, it indicates a low voltage condition on the Raspberry Pi. If it's out long enough or goes, or if the voltage gets low enough, it will simply do a full reboot. It'll shut down on us. I've had that a few times. I have an error in that script. That works. Let's create a new script, which we'll call rest.py in there. Rest point three. Execute that, and not a flicker from the red light, which it was doing previously. So that has made a big difference. Hopefully, that'll help me overcome some of the errors that I've been getting. Uh, some of the errors have been hard to trace because they crop up and the robot crashes at the same time, which makes it very difficult to trace. So I'm looking at painting parts of this robot, this nice yellow color, other parts I'll paint black or a darker color like I have in the rails. These rails have these little plastic parts with the captive nuts, which slide into the spots here. This uh, transport or clear white plastic one is designed to take a GoPro camera mount. I'll probably replace that with this one and put an arm or something like that on it to make it more useful when I figure out how to make this thing walk. So that'll do for this video. If you like these videos don't forget to click on the like, subscribe, ring that notification bell so that you know when the next video comes out. It's also a way of supporting the channel that doesn't cost you anything at all. If you'd like to support the channel further, I do have a Patreon account. Uh, big thanks to my Patreons as VIPs, Go Lucky, and Lorenz Berger, and my builder level, uh, Elmorales45. I also have a Discord channel, and there'll be a link in the description 
or both the Patreon and the Discord. I do answer questions when I see them, and we'll see you in the next video.